have the privilege of hearing Caleb Thornton. Uh, Caleb uh, is a student, a former student of our AIM program who came in 2015. And after finishing his time in Brazil um, at the end of 2017, he began some time working in construction. And after working in a secular job for a while, uh, he realized that he needed to be doing a work in the kingdom. Those who influenced Caleb to come to Sunset were his teammate in Brazil, Eric Bishop, uh, his AIM assistant, Andrew Shipley, and one of his closest friends, Brandon Payen. Caleb says some of his greatest joys while being at Sunset are the experiences of spiritual growth and the wisdom that he's received. He speaks highly of the classmates who have become his family, and he has developed a deep and uh, intense learn, learning for and a passion uh, for preaching God's Word. When Caleb describes himself uh, as the, um, the man of God that he desires to be, he gives God the credit by saying that God has taught him to be patient and has given him a desire to know him deeply, to teach others that they may know and love him as well. Right now, Caleb has no plans for uh, a destination after he lives here at sunset, but he makes this statement, and I find it admirable. He says, I do not know where the Lord will send me yet, but I know that wherever I end up, whatever congregation, city, or state, I will serve God and his people wholly. And so now we want to invite Caleb to come and preach the word. Thank you, Gibby. I'd like to thank everyone who's tuning in today, everybody that's watching. It means a lot to know that you're interested, you'd like to hear. What are responsibilities that you have? What things do you, do you think of that day-to-day -day you need to accomplish in order to have what you consider a productive day? Think of those things and then ask yourself, are any of these things the work of the Lord? Now I'm going to turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse 9. Peter says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He says that we are a chosen or a royal priesthood. We are God's priesthood. And a priesthood has responsibilities. So what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to look at the Levites, who are God's original priesthood. And I want to look at parallels between the original priesthood and us, Christians, the new royal priesthood, so that we, know, we can know that we are God's priesthood, and we will also see the responsibilities that we have as his priesthood, so that we can serve our king much more efficiently, effectively. So I'm going to start by going to Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 4. Leviticus 16 verse 4. Now in this passage, in this passage, the high priest is preparing himself for the Day of Atonement. Now the Day of Atonement was it came once a year. And it was the day that the high priest would go and he would offer a sacrifice that would atone for the sins of the whole nation of Israel. 
Now, I want you to also keep in mind that in Hebrews, it says that Jesus is our high priest and he offered one sacrifice for all of our sins. And that's going to be another parallel. But let's, let's look at verse 4. It says, He shall put on the holy linen coat and shall have the linen undergarment on his body. And he shall tie the linen sash around his waist and wear the linen turban. These are the holy garments. He shall bathe his body in water and put them on. So to prepare for his duties, for the high priest to prepare for his duties on the Day of Atonement, he had to remove his old garments, then he had to wash with water. Then he would put on new garments. And afterwards, we also see that he, he had to wash again and remove those garments and put on his old ones again. And he had to do this year after year. And I want to draw attention to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Well, there it is. It says, For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come, instead of the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered since the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sins? But in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So we see that in the old law, with the old priesthood, that it had to happen every single year. It had to happen time and time again. And that their, their washing and their sacrifices could not completely rid them of sins. But our priesthood, the new royal priesthood, only had to be washed one time. And it cleanses everything. It prepares us for worship. It prepares us for the work of the priest. And it cleanses our conscience, conscience from sin. So now let's look at how we are cleansed. How are we washed? Look at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians 3, verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So everyone who is baptized, which is a washing of water, has been clothed with Christ. They have put on new garments. So just like the high priest in Leviticus had to wash and be clothed in new clothes to conduct the acts of worship, we, the new royal priesthood, are washed by the great high priest's blood and clothed by him so that we can conduct the acts, all the acts of worship. The priesthood God has given us is much better than the old one. The old priesthood had to offer sacrifices every year. Our priesthood only needed one sacrifice. The old priesthood could only wash once a year. And that was to be able to do just one act of worship. But through baptism, our priesthood remains washed and remains equipped for all the acts of the priesthood. We worship a God who has provided a perfect priesthood for us in which our sins are eternally atoned for and we are continually prepared for service as priests. So now that we're prepared, now that we know that we are prepared for worship, we need a place where we can conduct our worship. So let's look again at the Levites. In Exodus chapter 25, verse, tw verse 8, it says that the Lord spoke, to, spoke about Israel and said, Let them construct a sanctuary for me, that I may dwell among them. And he goes on to give them instruction as as to how they're to build the tabernacle. 
The tabernacle was the tent in which God dwelt so that he could be among his people. It was also the place where all the acts of worship were conducted. And later, whenever Israel finally makes it to the land of Canaan, the tabernacle, the tabernacle takes a permanent location and becomes a, a more solid structure and is called the temple. But then in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, Paul tells us that your body is a temple. He also states that God's Holy Spirit dwells inside you. So if you're a temple and God dwells inside you, then worship would have to be done inside of you as well. So when we're baptized into Christ, we are prepared for worship and our bodies become temples in which we conduct our worship. So if we have the preparation for worship, if we have a place to do, to conduct our worship, now we have to know how to conduct the worship. So again, looking at the Levites in Leviticus chapter one, and also in chapters two and three, we find the three main offerings that the Israelites would offer in worship to God. There was the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the peace offering. Now the burnt offering was a consecration of one's whole life to the Lord. The grain offering was a consecration of all of one's possessions to the Lord. And the peace offering was a celebration of having fellowship with the Lord. So the essential purpose of all of these offerings together was just to say, all that I am and all that I have belongs to you, Lord. And then also they would express gratitude for him being in their presence. Now, this is the main thing that I want to get across in all that I'm saying is the idea of worship and how it is conducted and how, is, how it is to be conducted by us, the new priesthood. So what is our equivalent? What is, what is our grain offering, our burnt offering, and our peace offering? Well, if the burnt offering was a devotion of one's life, then look at, look at Romans chapter 12. Romans 12 and verse 1. Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. He says that we are to present our bodies. Our worship is to present our physical bodies to the Lord. And this is not a sacrifice like the Levites had, where with the animals that had to be slaughtered and put on an altar. It is a sacrifice of the functions of the body to the service of the Lord. And in James chapter one, verse 27, James says that pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So James, he demonstrates two things in this passage. He says that there is service to those in need and abstinence from sin. And the word that he uses for religion can also be translated or is, actually means the acts or the rites of worship. So our acts of worship would be service to others and abstinence from sin. That is our burnt offering. The grain offering, the devotion of one's possessions, we can, we can find this in the words of Jesus in Matthew 16, 21. When he's speaking to the, to the rich young ruler, he says, if you wish to be complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And also in Acts chapter four, verses 34 and 35, we have the example of the disciples. And it says, for there was not a needy person among them. For all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the cells and lay them at the apostles' feet. And they would be distributed to each as any had need. So our grain offering as Christians, as the new priesthood, would be giving what we own to the service of others and to the service of the Lord. 
And finally, there's the peace offering, the offering of gratitude for fellowship with God. For us, it is simply the act of prayer. In Philippians 4, 6, Paul says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. There are all kinds of ways that we can give thanks simply by going to God in prayer and speaking directly to him. So then, we have a preparation for worship. We have a place where we can do worship. And instead of having the offerings that the Levites had that expressed devotion of oneself and their possessions and to give gratitude, we have a new form of worship that is a literal devotion of our lives to serving others and serving the Lord and a literal devotion of our possessions to the same service. And we can literally go before God and thank him directly for everything and even for his fellowship. So now that we have this, we have the preparation, we have the place to conduct worship and we know how to do worship. What is it all for? What do we gain from this? What is our inheritance? as being God's priesthood. Well, again, let's look at the Levites. In Numbers chapter 18, verse 20, God speaks to Aaron, who is basically the leader of the Levites, and he's speaking to him about uh, the land of Canaan, because the Israelites, each tribe, received a portion of land in Canaan. So God says, to Aaron about the, the Levites' land. In verse 20, you shall have no inheritance in their land, neither shall you have any portion among them. I am your portion in your, in your inheritance among the people of Israel. So the Lord is their inheritance. They don't actually get land. They don't get anything here. They get our God. And don't we have a song that says something about this world not being our home and having treasures and in heaven. I thought we had a song like that or something. Maybe I'm wrong. But look at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3 verse 20. Paul speaks of our inheritance, our land that we receive as God's priesthood. Philippians 3.20 says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship is found in heaven. Our citizenship is with the Lord. So now we see not only that we are God's priesthood, but what it means to be his priesthood. The Levitical priesthood had to wash every single year in order to prepare for a certain service of worship. And they had to use a physical location to worship in. And they had to perform acts that only symbolized worship. And also their inheritance was God. For us, as the new priesthood, we have been continually prepared for all worship by just one washing of Christ's blood. And we are given a temple in ourselves where we can worship anytime, anywhere. And our acts of worship are legitimate devotions and not just symbols. And our inheritance is also a place with the Lord in heaven. My charge then is this. Since you have been baptized into the new royal priesthood of God, and are given a temple within yourself, fulfill your priestly duty by devoting your life to serving others and serving the Lord and giving what you have to help those who need it and to the work of the church. And be sure to always give thanks to the Lord for the inheritance that you have with him in heaven. And I want to close with this. Right now, we are currently dealing with a very strange, unique situation with the COVID-19 pandemic. But even though it's a tough situation, we have been presented with numerous 
opportunities to serve people. We can do all kinds of things like offer to pick up one's groceries if we know that they can't get out of their house. We can offer to give people rides if we know that they uh, don't have transportation, and buses and uh, things like that are not functioning. Uh, we can offer to pay for things for people who uh, have not been able to keep their job at this time. There are all kinds of ways that we can help. And the thing is, it shouldn't just stop here. It's not just for this time. The church should be doing these things in every season, not just during a situation like this. And there are all forms of communication that we have nowadays that you can use to talk to people and find needs that need to be filled. Communicate with people and ask what they need from you so that you can serve them. And whatever it is that you do, just be sure that you serve, that you serve others, that you serve as is the responsibility of God's priesthood. Because the productivity that matters is not defined by whether or not you did well at your job today or you finished a certain project today, but fulfilling your duty as God's faithful priest, that is being productive. Thank you, Caleb, for reminding us not only what we're to be doing, but who we are and whose we are and the job that we're about as we live our lives as Christians. Would you bow with me as we close our time together today? Thank you, Father, for such a beautiful day in which we could come and together look at the beautiful pictures in Scripture of what our role as priest are to look like and are to be. Thank you, Father, for Caleb and for his life. I pray that you will bless he and Bailey as they look forward to the future uh, in their plans to serve the kingdom. Father, we thank you for such capable teaching and expression of your truth so clearly and so plainly uh, as, as Caleb expounded upon the scripture today. And we thank you for uh, the description that he gave us so that we could not only know how to conduct today, but throughout the rest of our lives as we worship you. Father, may our lives be truly uh, at that which will reflect your love, that will be imitators of Jesus, that will draw the lost to want to know you better and know who you are. Father, we thank you for Jesus who came as our great high priest and who has carried out uh, your descriptions and has set an example that we might follow. And Father, please help make us more like him. Thank you for our families. We pray that you'll watch over us during this time, that uh, you'll watch over your church. You'll cause us to be the people that you desire us to be and give us the opportunities to serve you in ways that will honor you and truly bring glory to your name. Father, we thank you for your love. And with that, we want to start our day in a positive way to begin doing the things that Caleb has reminded us about. And it's through Jesus we pray. Amen.